The President, please be seated. The Chamber is now back in session. Before we proceed to the next item of the agenda, the Chamber would like uh, to inform the parties as follow. The parties are advised that when the discussion concerning the witnesses, expert and civil party list begins, they should bear in mind that until a specific decision is made, no witness expert or civil party has as yet been rejected. They are also asked to limit their comments as far as possible to those witnesses, experts and civil parties whose names have been included in the tentative list and to recall that this list is for the first fa phases of the trial. Next, uh, we proceed to the next item concerning the initial specification of reparations sought uh, pursuant to internal rule. Under the internal rule 23 Quinquis 3b, Under the internal rules as amended, the civil party lead co-lawyers may seek two distinctive avenues of reparation. If they choose, they may seek reparation in the form of a civil claim against the accused. This was the sole form of reparation available to civil parties in case 001 before the ECCC and it has been retained under the present rules. As clarified in the verdict in case 001 against Kang Gek Eo alias Dutch, these awards are granted against an accused if he or she is convicted and enforced where necessary by ordinary Cambodian courts. Should this avenue be considered unlikely to result in meaningful reparation for victims, The revised rules now permit the civil party lead co-lawyers to instead propose reparations initiatives, which can then be facilitated by the victim's support section via project management. These initiatives do not result in enforceable claims against the accused. Instead, the success or otherwise of these initiatives will depend on the ability of the victim's support section to obtain sufficient funding in support of each initiative and to oversee their successful implementation. Reparations under either model before the ECCC are collective and moral. 
there is essentially symbolic in character neither avenue envisages direct financial compensation to individual civil parties this is impracticable in view of the exceedingly large number of individual victims and the unlikelihood that significant funds could be found to satisfy any more than a small proportion of such individual claims. As indicated at the trial management meeting and subsequently in the agenda for the initial hearing, the lead co-lawyers have been granted an opportunity to provide initial specifications of the substance of the reparations awards which they intend to seek within the final claim for collective and moral reparation pursuant to Rule 23 Quinquius 3b. The civil party lead co-lawyers have been allocated to one hour for this purpose. The trial chamber is uh, uh, the trial chamber is aware that all admissibility appeals regarding individual civil party have been rendered. The early indications provided by the civil party lead co-lawyers as to the nature of their repressions claim provide important early indications to the trial chamber. It is recognized that the particular of the award sort may evolve over time. Now it is opportunity for the lead co-lawyers to uh, proceed. Zoom group. Wait, um, good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Your Honours. Good afternoon, Venerable Monks and the general public in the main courtroom, as well as those overseas. The lead co lawyer, pursuant to the internal rules, so as the initial specifications of the reparation awards that we intend to seek. during the final part of the hearing. I, Pei Ang, the National Lead Co-Lawyers, and we have Ms. Elizabeth Simino Ford, will make our presentation regarding the reparation awards that we intend to seek, and we will allocate the times amongst ourselves after my presentation, then my colleague will make her presentation within this one hour period. To start with, in regards to the reparations awards, the acknowledgement of the crimes or the violations of human rights at the national and international levels is a major concern. Victims actively participate in seeking out the truth and justice. The victims within the context of the ECCC request to be civil parties some to be the complainants and some to be witnesses. For those who apply to be civil parties have their intention to seek the truth and justice and to seek reparation awards 
for the victims as well as for the society as a whole. Although not on every occasion the request shall be accepted, at least certain awards shall be given to the civil parties. And that would also benefit the victims in general and would mend their heart. In fact, the awards that they received cannot repair their suffering caused by the harm. At least it contributes to help them to heal their psychological wound, to make their feeling better gradually. And that is the right of the victims to receive a, an appropriate solution due to the violations of their fundamental rights. During the leadership of the three years, eight months period, the leaders and those who had senior positions who are allegedly involved in the crimes committed, which caused to the loss of a huge number of innocent lives. And that's a serious violation of both national and international law. The Kingdom of Cambodia, with the support from the United Nations, established the ECCC, which is a court within the domestic judiciary, in order to prosecute, to prosecute the crimes committed during such period. And it is also responsible in providing the reparation awards to the victims. And what are the legal basis for these reparation awards within the context of this court, as, as well as for the international justice? It is understood that the awards are all the measures to repair the harms done, suffered by the victims, and the harms caused the suffering and as a consequence of a crime. National standards ensure the rights to be result for the reparation for the victims for all the offenses which affects their interests and their rights. The rights to receive this reparation is done through the judiciary system. The Constitution of the Kingdom of Cambodia, Article 31, states that the Cambodia acknowledge and respects the right as stipulated in the United Nations Rights, the Universal Declarations of the Human Rights, and other conventions related to the human rights, the rights of women and children. We all have the obligations to respect the right with no prejudice to the rest, religions, and political tendencies. For example, Article 39 of the Constitution states about the rights of the public to request for the reparations or any violations committed by a state institution or officer through the judiciary system. In addition, the Code of the Criminal Procedure 2007 clearly states about the right and the intention of the request for reparation within the criminal offense. The Code of the Criminal Procedure, which was promulgated in 2007, states the right of an individual which has been violated. They have the right to request to the court to abolish such a, a violation or to provide a reward to them. And also in Article 10, the right involves the individual, includes the rights, which have the rights to life, the rights to health, and they are honored. The ECCC, here we also have Rule 80 bis regarding the initial hearing, which states in paragraph 4 
that the chamber may require the lead co-lawyers to provide the initial specification of the collective and moral awards that we intend to seek. In the final claim, according to Rule 23, Queen Quiz 3B of the Internal Rules, the chamber so determined the require the lead co lawyers to provide the specifications of the reparation, reparation awards. Point five of the rule. The state, the final claim for collective and moral reparation may deviate from the initial specification where necessary, but so in any case specify both the substance and the mode of implementation of each award. Rule 23, Queen Quiz 3b, in relation to the final claim, shall require for additional information And for each claim, the chamber may order that the award shall be borne by the accused and recognize that a specific project appropriately gives effect to the award sought by the lead co lawyers and may be implemented. Such projects shall have been designed or identified in cooperation with the victim's support section and have secured sufficient external funding. This is what stated in the internal rules and that can be that is applicable within the ECTC. Also the international provisions states to such effect and for further details I would like to give the floor to my colleagues to provide the details. What are the provisions of international law regarding the law on reparations? The, the right to reparations is recognized in international law by conventions, some UN organizations, and the United Nations Human Rights Protection System. We can refer particularly to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights a fundamental source of the instruments and jurisprudence relating to the issue of reparations. The, the document provides that all are entitled to uh, reparations before courts for violations of his or her rights recognized by the law. And then we have uh, Article 2, 3, a of the ICCPR of 1966. It provides that states that are signatories of that covenant um, commit themselves to recognize that all persons whose rights are violated will have recourse, even when those violations were committed by persons acting in an official capacity all persons who are victims of arrest or illegal detention are entitled to reparations. Then regarding human rights violations, crimes committed against citizens, and the recognition of the harm suffered or likely to be suffered. In 1985, the United Nations General Assembly adopted a document entitled Declaration of Basic Principles of Justice Relating to Victims of Crimes and Victims of Abuse of Power. This declaration lays down fundamental principles aimed at supporting governments and the international community in their efforts to ensure that justice is done and that victims of crimes and victims of abuse of power are compensated, making sure that they have access to justice, restitution, and compensation. The declaration stipulates 
that it is not possible to obtain complete uh, reparation from the perpetrators of the crimes and the states themselves have to shoulder the financial costs and I quote victims who have endured bodily injury or physical or mental injury following serious criminal acts and B families in particularly persons who are dependents of per deceased persons or who are mentally incapacitated following the crimes of which they are victims. And lastly, this declaration encourages, I quote, the establishment, the strengthening and expansion of national funds for compensation of victims and it states, and I quote, depending on the needs, it would be proper to establish other funds and compensation mechanisms particularly in the cases where the states whose victims uh, the states uh, the vic who, that are the states of the victims are not in a position to obtain compensation it is proper with reference to victims of international human humanitarian law and uh, uh, victims of human rights uh, according to the principles defined by Van Boven and Bassioni on the one hand and Joannet. The United Nations General Assembly adopted on the 21st of March 2006 a resolution relating to, and I quote, fundamental principles and directives regarding the right to recourse and reparations for victims of grave violations of international humanitarian law and serious violations of human rights." End of quote. These fundamental principles adopt a perspective that places victims at the very forefront and sets out in detail the procedure for the award of victims uh, to award of reparations that are effective rapid and adequate to victims, end of quote. And this is proportionate to the gravity of the violations or the prejudice. Besides, principles 15 to 18 recall the objectives of the reparations which are aimed at ensuring that victims obtain full and effective reparations, the type of reparations that are described and detailed in principles 19 to 23 are as follows, and I quote, restitution, compensation, rehabilitation, satisf satisfaction, and lastly, the guarantee that those crimes will not be repeated. I would now, now like to f focus on international jurisdiction, jurisprudence and talk about the nature of the reparations. The ECCC internal rules provide that the request for reparations will be filed in two phases. What is of interest to us today is the first phase. Regarding this first phase, Rule 80 base only demands that the specifications should be an estimate that it will provide initial specification of the substance of the awards without specifying the form nor the exact contents of the request for purposes of comparison. Neither Cambodian law nor the practice of ad hoc tribunals nor that of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights makes provision for such a two-tire procedure. Before the International Criminal Court, according to the rules of procedure and evidence, applications for reparations do not have to be comprehensive. All they need to contain is a request for compensation, a request for rehabilitation, or reparations under other forms. It is therefore difficult to rely on 
international jurisprudence to specify the outlines and initial specifications of the nature of reparations. Perhaps only the interstate complaints mechanism of the European Court of Human Rights can shed some light on these notions regarding initial specifications of the nature of reparations. As such, the European Court of Human Rights demanded that states provide, and I quote, the outlines of what would be fair and satisfactory like the civil parties before the ECCC, the petitioner before the European Human Rights Court has to provide some indications of the reparations requested. In the case of Georgia and Russia, the initial specifications of the government invited the court to, and I quote, to award fair and satisfactory reparations that would be tantamount to compensation, reparation, damages, restitution in integrum, costs and expenses, and all other measures that are likely to compensate the victims for all material and psychological harm suffered on account of the violations of the present procedures." End of quote. It is therefore in this context of uh, um, jurisprudence, which is still embryonic, that the core lawyers of the civil parties are presenting before this chamber the initial specifications of the nature of the reparations required. I would like to, fo to stop here and focus on civil parties and the notion of civil parties, because there can't be any reparations without civil parties. And in this regard, I would like to say a few words. The internal rules of the ECCC, relying on the Cambodian Penal Code, which is based on French civil law, has introduced the notion of civil parties in its trials. Rule 23, 1B, specifies that civil party participation is aimed at seeking collective and moral reparations in accordance with Rule 23, Quinquess B. End of quote. The presence of civil parties at hearings cannot be considered as a measure aimed at ensuring that victims participate in the proceedings by expressing within a strictly circumscribed framework their anger, anxiety, and pain. Nothing stops them from doing so, from expressing s such a uh, phenomena while contributing to bringing the, the truth to light. But this is not enough in defining the role of a civil party. The civil party is not a guest attending trials to please the victims as if they were being offered some kind of a gratification, some kind of a reparation. A civil party is not only an opportunity to give victims an opportunity to be associated to the trial. All criminal proceedings that are open to civil parties are not designed to meet the victims' benevolent needs. Civil parties are not invited guests. They have a right that is recognized and defined in national and international legal norms. It is a right that is on an equal footing with other participants in the trials. It is therefore well-founded before the criminal proceedings, before the ECCC, which is subject to international jurisprudence, civil parties working with the prosecutor have the rights of all parties 
they can request documents, they can express their points of view in oral submissions and written submissions, and particularly in the case of civil parties, they can see submissions. The internal rules, when they refer to the rights of civil parties to the quality of arms, also concern civil parties as well as other parties. The civil parties were involved in the acts in question. They endured those acts and in the face of uh, the accused, they are victims of the violations. And this is obviously one of the key issues. Without civil parties, the crimes wouldn't exist. Civil parties are therefore more than victims. They are therefore protagonists in the trials. So their points of view are unique and their contributions are crucial. They are entitled to seek reparations, but they have to wait to make sure that guilt is established. Because the civil party was party to the facts, it is in a position to contribute to the ascertainment of the truth. Thus, its first objective is to ascertain the truth as well as to establish the guilt that makes this person a victim. The second objective of the civil party is reparation. Reparation was enshrined as a right, uh, and including the request for reparation in a criminal trial is allowing a link to exist between this reparation and the acts that are prosecuted. It is providing its full meaning to the right to reparation. It also means giving meaning to the sentence and the link between the civil party and the sentence is the gravity of the facts. Treating reparation separately from a criminal tribunal is removing part of reality from both of these um, elements. Requesting reparation as a result of the criminal trial after having participated as a party is the result of a judicial and juridical process which implies a victim, a guilty person, harm, and reparation. Now, I will let uh, my colleague continue. The President, please turn on your microphone. But um, internal rule requires for the crimes to be the result of the acts in and related to the civil parties. The civil party applicants need to show that the direct the the direct cause of the acts or crimes alleged against the accused that they are the direct. They directly suffered physically, emotionally, or materially in order to be eligible to seek reparations. And there needs to be a link between the award claimed and the harm suffered. And it also needs to be related to the facts. The existence of the harm and its connection to the facts under the scope of the investigation is shown through the result of the investigation by the co-investigating judges. They asserted that all the complainants provide sufficient evidence that they directly suffered harms as the cause of those crimes. The relation between the facts and the harm caused were also identified by the co investing judges. The co investing judges said that after reviewing all the information submitted by the civil party applicants, there is sufficient information that the harm cause is a result of the acts under the judicial investigation as stipulated in 
the supplementary introductory submission by the co-prosecutors. Those who seek moral and collective reparations according to the internal rules means that the chamber can decide on the awards for the civil parties only. The consultation with the civil parties shall be done and such process and during such process the civil party indicates the awards that they seek through their lawyers and then the lawyers submit that to the lead co lawyers and we combined all those requests for the awards after discussing with all the lawyers. And when we received a decision of the pre-trial chamber recently, that is on the 24th of June 2011, we also received the newly recognized civil parties totaling 1,728, and it is necessary for us to consult with the newly recognized civil parties in order to ensure that they can express their desires for the reparation of what they seek. And then we will collect and gather all those requests in order to make a joint request to the trial chambers to be recognized for those awards request. The awards will be only given to the civil parties. However, it also can benefit the victims and the Cambodian citizens. And such a reparation awards cannot be for uh, any individual civil party. It is collective. It is for the consolidated group and it's a response to the needs of those members of the consolidated group. For example, for the victims who are Vietnamese ethnicity or those who are the victims who are monks or who are Cham ethnicity. The internal rules states about the effect that the convicted person shall be borne for all the awards through the request by the lead co lawyers. The lead co-lawyers shall also consult with the civil party lawyers after their consultation with their clients. In working with the victim support sectors, we actively collaborating together to collect the requests and opinions by the lawyers and by the other NGOs, and we continue to study in order to form tangible projects that can be acceptable and ca can be accepted rather. The reparation award intended to be sought by the lead co lawyers are based on the projects that will be formulated by the victims support section after going through various stages of discussion so that it can be appropriate. After the discussion with the civil party lawyers, it is shown that there are four major forms of award. One is in related to the memorial, two, it is related to the rehabilitation. Three, it is related to the compilation of documents and education. And number four, other awards. At the same time, pursuant to Rule 80 based of the internal rule with instruction from the trial chamber on the contents of the reparation awards, the civil party lawyers will submit such an initial request pursuant to the instructions of the trial chamber. In chapter 4 that I just mentioned,
The details include the memorial and the remembrance, the civil parties would like to request the recognition of a day to remember, that is a remembrance day, and it has not been decided yet. It could be the day that becomes an official public holiday or could be a day of remembrance to remember the genocide at the international level. There is also a request for the establishment of a stupa and a memorial site where appropriate And there are so be stupa for other there are so be supers where other observers of various religions could come and pay respect, regardless of their origins of the religion. There is no specification as to the numbers of the stupas to be designated. The civil parties also intend to request for the preservation of the killing sites. It, it is important that we need to study in details which site are considered to be the sites where a major number of people were executed. In the second chapter that is in relation to the rehabilitation, there are two uh, sub-points, that is the establishment of a framework. This psychological project and services where those people can receive such treatment free of charge and there shall be various other centers to provide such services. And n number two, that is also in relation to the rehabilitation, there shall be a consultation program where the victims could consult among themselves in order to minimize their psychological suffering when they meet one another so that they can relieve the suffering that they have been endured for so long. Regarding the compilation of document and education, there are three sub-points. There should be educational program in which there should be education about the history of the Democratic Campuchia, and some uh, parts of the program have already been implemented. Two, there is a request for the establishment of a center which is partly a museum and an archive or a library where people can go and visit. And this, the size of this center is dependent on the affordability and the location. And there is also a request for a large museum where the historical books shall be compiled in relation to the history of the Khmer Rouge. And that museum shall be established in Phnom Penh. Another point that is a request for the compilation of the list of victims. And finally, in relation to this type of the award that I received from civil parties through the civil party lawyers, which we have not discussed in details yet due to its complexity, is that
there is a project dealing with provision of citizenship to those Vietnamese victims and there is an educational project for children or the children of those who were born as a result of forced marriages during the Khmer Rouge regime. There is also a project to establish a trust fund and a trust fund And there is also a request to establish that trust fund in order to pay for those reparation awards. There is also a request for the dissemination of the judgment in case 002 so that the public can understand it. These are all the projects that have been raised and this consulted amongst the civil party lawyers and the lead co-lawyers after the consultation with the civil parties. And in fact, there shall be further discussions with the newly recognized civil parties. That is the 1,728 new civil parties recognized by the pre-trial chamber. Therefore, it is likely that the initial specifications of the awards may change. I would like now to give the floor again to my colleague to make the final presentations regarding the inner specifications of the reparation awards. Thank you, Joanna. Yeah. <laughs> yes, simply, uh, I would simply ask for a few moments to uh, retain your uh, attention and also I'd like to present a few ideas to think about. We have presented to you our first indications on the nature of the reparations that we are seeking. And uh, we, had, we were subject to very few obligations at this uh, stage, so therefore we had the possibility of modifying our requests and adding and, mod and, and it's obvious that we will be obliged to do so because uh, we are representing extra civil parties, many of them, that we must uh, consult with, and also because we are facing obligations in terms of the uh, elaboration of these reparation measures. This leads me to say that if we were in a position to present you uh, the first indications without many obligations, we had to follow many uh, stricter uh, obligations from the internal rules, requirements that we could call extraordinary and exceptionally um, demanding because we are asked uh, either to turn against the accused or to draft projects on our own that are specific of which specificities we will have to underscore and to provide sufficient clarification on their implementation mode, and finally, to provide the guarantee that there will be sufficient financing to back these projects. And such demands are unique in international and national courts, and they might represent quasi-sanctions for the civil parties. They might even represent a, a, a potential obstacle to the right to reparation and the civil party lawyers will make sure that this does not happen. Another one of my thoughts uh, is that uh, when we will have gone, when uh, the court will close and when its work of justice will be completed, what will remain here if is the sanction if there is a sentence and of course the reparations and 
the civil party co-deed lawyers, as well as the civil party lawyers, would like to underscore again the symbolic and legal importance of these judicial reparations that represent a fundamental right that the civil parties may not be deprived of, and their scope and uh, the scope and uh, the obligations involved in a verdict seem obvious and provide judicial reparations their full value that cannot be equated with the lesser value, but however important, of non-judicial measures, which by definition are not linked to the verdict. And the choice of a trial imposes that each party's rights be respected and that the principles be respected as well. And I would like, in order to close this subject today, to tell you that we're respectfully requesting you to take note of these first indications on the nature of the reparations we intend to seek, but especially we would like to, in, to entrust the Chamber to implement the reparations as a right and not as an obligation. The President, thank you, lead co lawyers, for your presentation. Do any of the other parties have any observations to make at this point regarding the presentation made by the lead co lawyers? You may take the floor if you have. The President, I observe there is no points to be raised by any other parties. Today's agenda regarding the earlier arguments and the presentations seems to be appropriate for the time being for today. We therefore adjourned for today's hearing and we saw resumed tomorrow morning starting from 9 a.m. This is the information for all the concerned parties and the public security officers. You are instructed to bring the three accused back to the detention facility and bring the four accused back to this courtroom before 9 a.m. tomorrow. The graphic all rise.